Every time you open stable projectors, it will automatically launch a command prompt window like this, which was developed by Automatic 11.11 and which actually generates the images. Stable projectors communicates with this window all the time, so it's important to keep it up and running while the program is uh, active. If it's your first time launching stable projectors, then the window will need to download and install different dependencies, so it might take at least 30 minutes. It will download TensorFlow, Torch and default neural network. It might appear to be frozen or stuck, but just give it time and let it complete its preparations. Once everything is ready, you'll see a green connection icon here in Stable Projectors, signifying that the two have connected to each other. When generating images, you'll have to select which neural network you want to use, because depending on whichever one you choose, you'll have different artistic results, different quality and style applied to your textures. By default, when you've just launched stable projectors and everything has set up, you'll only have one single neural network. It's okay for generations, but it's quite basic and the quality is not the best. If you want to expand the collection of your neural networks, you can go into the bottom right corner and click on the Download AI Models button. This will launch Civit AI website with the Base Model section already clicked. You can scroll down and look at different artistic styles and pick whichever neural network you want to use. For example, this one. Once you download it and use it for generation, the textures will have similar artistic style to the one that you see on the images. So you can click on the button here, download. It's six and a half gigabytes and it's going to be dropped into your downloads folder. From the downloads folder, it's important to put it into the correct location. Locate the place where you've installed stable projectors. So I have it right here. Then go into the stable diffusion web UI master folder into the modals and into the stable diffusion and drag this large file from your downloads folder into here. If I sort by type, you can already see that I got nine different modals. I've got safe tensors and I also got checkpoint modals. Their size is pretty large, so it's akin to the one that you see here. When you're downloading base modals, watch out because their type is important. There is SDXL, but there's also stuff like stable diffusion 1.5. The 1.5 version is a lot more artistic because it has been trained on a much wider variety of images, although their resolution is smaller than the SDXL. And finally, there is a third type of models that you can download or encounter. They're called LoRa, and they are typically significantly smaller, so something like 30 megabytes maybe, or 100 megabytes. Those LoRa models are used to fine-tune extra details on the fingers, on the face, and you have to watch out for their compatibility. So there could be LoRa models for SDXL or for uh, version 1.5. And also LoRa model will list a list of keywords that you need to mention in your text prompts to activate those LoRa models. So for the LoRa models, if you ever decide to get one, go into the uh, location where your stable projector is, in is installed. Once again, this stable diffusion web UI master folder and uh, go into the Models, but this time not into the Stable Diffusion, but into LoRa, and drag your LoRa models in there. Restart Stable Projectors, and you should be able to use them. So it's important to make sure that you pay attention to the compatibility of models in case of LoRa, and also if LoRa specifies different keywords, then you'll need to put them into the text prompt here. But the LoRa models are more like an add-on. You don't really need them. You can already use the base models that you downloaded uh, from this list, and you'll be good. Finally, you also need to pay attention to the modals used by the control nets. The control net units have their own collection of uh, neural networks. They are different to the ones that you saw on the left here. And the most important one is the depth. The control net is what forces the generation to occur in specific region. It provides extra information about depth of the image so that neural networks actually understand where you expect them to generate what you've asked them to. To get such models for the control nets, just click on the Get More button, which will open up a website, Hugging Face, with a repository by Looming Jang, with different models that you can grab. You can see that the depth, PTH, is here. It's one and a half gigabytes. So you can click on the arrow here and also grab its YAML file. To install these uh, control net models, you have to pick a correct location. So locate your Stable Diffusion projectors executable. Once again, go into the Stable Diffusion Web UI Master, but this time go into the extensions, SD Web UI Control Net, developed by Microbill, and its modals subdirectory. 
Here you can see you can drag and drop files. And um, you can see I've got YAML files and also the PTH depth, which is right here. Once you got everything ready and uh, plugged into the proper folders, just restart stable projectors, restart the black window, and make use of your modals. As a final advice, when you are deciding where to install the stable projectors program, don't put it into the C program files, because Windows really cares about what happens in these folders, and it's a lot more restrictive. Instead, put it into the documents, because it's a lot more safe for the Windows that the program isn't here, and uh, stable projectors will be able to download extra networks, install dependencies uh, inside of its subdirectories as required. And lastly, if you have any kind of questions, you can always go into the bottom right corner, go into the Stable Projectors website, and in there click on the button that says Discord. Join me on my server and exchange ideas or ask questions. In fact, there is one more very important thing. If you really want to get the best performance out of Stable Projectors, Stable Diffusion and the Automatic 11.11 web UI, you might really go an extra mile and next to the Stable Projectors, go into the Stable Diffusion web UI master, and find a file which is called webui user bat. It must be of type uh, Windows batch file, so it should have the .bat extension. You can right-click it, go into properties, and verify that the extension is bat. So once you found it, webui user bat, you can right-click it and add it with a notepad. In here, you can see that there is some important command line arguments uh, which you might want to modify. By default, when you're installing stable projectors, it will specify the ones to make it compatible for everyone, but they are also gonna slow down the system quite a bit. So if you want, you can remove the med VRAM, just uh, take it and erase it, and you can erase the precision fool, you can erase no half and no half VAE, and also the NAND check. So you only have dash dash API remaining. And if you have an NVIDIA card, after the dash dash API, put space and put dash dash Xformers, which is going to speed it up by at least another 10% and also going to drastically reduce the amount of VRAM that it's using, so you are able to generate even more images at once. But if it stops working for you, just use the default arguments that I've specified. Hit Ctrl S to save it and close the file. With that, you are fully set up and are able to work with stable projectors. Make sure to check out the second tutorial where I show the tool in more detail. See you there.